Hello and welcome into this week's edition of the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below and hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing from Racing News Now going forward. On this channel, we discuss lots of motorsports, namely NASCAR, ARCA, IndyCar, and Formula One. On tonight's edition of the Trucks Rewind Show, we're looking back at last night's 6th annual Eldora Dirt Derby from the Eldora Speedway, that half-mile dirt track there in Rossburg, Ohio. We went 153 laps in this one, just a bit into overtime, as this was a wild one. Nine cautions on the night for 41 laps. Lap number 11 was the first caution as Johnny Sauter spun in turn number two. Not a good night for Johnny Sauter, but as he admits... This type of driving is not his forte. He is not good on dirt, and it showed last night. Lap 22, the 45 truck of Justin Fontaine spun in turn number three. Then on lap 29, we had another spin in turn three from the two truck of, of Cody Coughlin and the 52 truck of Stuart Friesen. Both of them would rebound for decent night, or excuse me, Stuart Friesen would rebound for a decent night. Cody Coughlin, though, Really did not. Stage 1 concluded lap 40. Uh, your Stage 1 winner was Ben Rhodes, who absolutely dominated the first stage and his heat race. Ben Rhodes does not come from a dirt background, but really showed some strength early on last night in the dirt derby. Stage number 2, incident in turn number 2 at lap 55. Matt Crafton and the 17 of Tyler Dipple getting together. Stage 2 concluded at lap 90. Your Stage 2 winner was Chase Briscoe making his return to the series. First start of 2018 in the 27 truck for Thor Sport, their fifth entry for the week. Stage number 3, we had a few more cautions. Lap 131, Tyler Dipple getting into another incident this time with the 22 truck of Austin Wayne self. That was a lap 131. Lap 138, Three-truck incident in turn number four between Todd Gilliland, the 13-truck of Myatt Snyder, and the 12 of Ty Dillon all getting together in turn number four. And the final caution of the night was at lap 147. This was the one that took us into overtime. Fairly large incident on the backstretch between Dalton Sargent, the 15 of J.R. Hefner, Norm Benning, and the 63 of Kyle Strickler. That would be the end of the night for both Norm Benning and Kyle Strickler as they would not be able to finish the event. All right, so your leaders on the night. Chase Briscoe led the most laps with 54. Logan CV one lap short of leading the most laps on the night, uh, making his first Truck Series start in 51 for Kyle Busch Motorsports. He led 53 laps. Ben Rhodes led 44 laps early on before having lots of problems in Stage 2 and uh, ending up a few laps off the pace at the end of the race, very far down the finishing order. One lap apiece went to Grant Infinger and Stuart Friesen. All right, let's get into your results on the night. And Chase Briscoe would be your winner. He is now uh, two for two in his last two races in the Truck Series as he won Homestead to finish out the 2017 season. And this was his first race of 2018 in the Trucks. So back-to-back -back wins for Mr. Briscoe in the Truck Series, driving that 27 truck this week for Thor Sport. Had a very tight battle right to the end with his teammate Grant Enfinger. Very exciting finish, beating and banging. That's what we like to see on short tracks. And uh, Grant Enfinger coming up just a bit short in this one. Stuart Friesen, who uh, many of us, including me, thought was uh, probably the, the strongest truck in the field, uh, at least heading into the night and had the best chance of winning, comes home in the third position. He was uh, very up and down on the night. We mentioned his incident lap 29 as he spun in turn number three. Had to fight his way back from the back of the pack after that. Never really could quite uh, get back to the lead after that point. Matt Crafton, Brett Moffat rounded out the top five. Rest of your top ten were Noah Gragson, John Hunter Nemechek, Logan Seavey, Justin Haley, and Nick Hoffman in the 83 truck this week. As we get down through the rest of the running order here, 11th through 20th, we'll see a lot of names we don't normally see in the truck series. A lot of these are uh, the really good dirt racing shoes, as they're called. Uh, the guys that have cut their teeth on dirt and have made a name on dirt, and they're 
uh, very good on dirt. Um, not a lot of them finishing very high in the running order last night, though, interestingly enough. Uh, as we see here on the 11th through 20th list, Ty Dillon in the race last night. He ended up in the 12th, or in the 11th position in the 12th truck. Max McLaughlin there in the 12th position. That's the son. Uh, if you remember Mike McLaughlin uh, back uh, probably 20 years ago or so in the Cup Series, um, that would be his son making his first career Truck Series start. Comes home with a respectable 12th place finish. Tyler Dipple in the 13th position. We talked about a couple of incidents he got into on the night. We've seen him a couple of times this year on the ARCA Racing Series side of things, making his first Truck Series start in the 17 for uh, DGR Crosley. His DGR Crosley teammate there in 14th, the 54 truck of Chris Windham. Big Daddy, as he is known on the dirt racing schedule. Big Daddy is one of the premier shoes in the uh, the dirt racing side of things. 14th was all he could muster last night, though. Sheldon Creed, we are very accustomed to that name here on Racing News now, as we've seen him uh, this entire season on the ARCA Racing Series. Uh, current points leader for the ARCA Racing Series, uh, making his first truck series start in the 99 truck for MDM Motorsports, came home in the 15th position. Johnny Sauter, after all of his issues on the night, not really being all that great at dirt, does end up with a lead lap finish there in the 16th position. And then Myatt Snyder had a couple of issues on the night, still ends up with a top 20 finish in 20th. 21st through 30th, Todd Gilliland. We talked about his issue late. 22nd for him. Dalton Sargent there in the 27th position. Cody Coughlin came home in 28th. Ben Rhodes, after all of his issues in stage number two and then later on, came home in the 29th position. Definitely not where he had hoped to be, especially as fast as he was early on in the race. Ryan Newman uh, making his second start in the Dirt Derby, driving that three car for Jordan, or three truck for Jordan Anderson this week. He had some issues in the second stage as well. Had a top 10 capable truck, I think. Uh, finished ninth in the first stage, but then had some troubles in that second stage and comes home in the 30th position, four laps off the pace. Then 31st, 32nd, here we see Kyle Strickler and Norm Benning. They got caught up in that last incident of the night that forced overtime, and that is where they would end up on the night. All right, so that's your results from the Eldora Dirt Derby. Now let's head over to the Media Center. We don't have video this week because it's not in conjunction with the Cup Series. We only have audio, so we have the audio from your winner, Chase Briscoe. We will see what he thought after last night's win in the Dirt Derby. Yeah, hopefully I got a ride next year. I'll have to start working on these guys here next week. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely, uh, to me, the whole reason Ford even – let me come do this was they first off they knew i'd have fun but the main reason was they they wanted to get a win so uh, i'm just so thankful that them and thor sport was willing to let me do it and to be able to reward these guys with uh getting a win is uh definitely cool and felt like last year i probably had one get away with for me here just because we lost fourth gear i think eight laps into the race and, and made it a struggle so uh, I know this is probably the most determined I've ever been behind the wheel there, those last probably eight laps or so. So uh, it's uh, really cool. Hate it for uh, CV. A lot of people probably don't realize it, but he drives for my sprint car team. So uh, that was kind of unique getting to race against him. And uh, honestly, without that, that caution with 25 laps to go, I, I probably don't even have a chance to get there. So uh, whoever wrecked, thank you. And uh, hopefully be back next year. All right, so let's take a look at your playoff grid before wrapping up here tonight. And as you'll see, obviously no changes in the winner's column as Chase Briscoe not running the full season in the trucks, actually running for Xfinity points this year, even though he's only running a part-time schedule on that side as well. So we're looking here at the cutoff line once again, and as you will see, a huge gap now, a 99-point gap between Matt Crafton and Myatt Snyder. Um... These guys below the cutoff line at this point, I really do believe, are not pointing their way in. They have got to win. Anybody outside the top eight right now has got to win a race if they want to be in the playoffs. And I'm looking specifically at Todd Gilliland. Todd Gilliland can win a race, and I think he will win a race before the playoffs. Because at this point, as far out as he is, he is currently sitting in the 13th position in points. Uh, looks like about 140 points back. 
Uh, so he's he's a good ways back right now. I, he's definitely not pointing his way in, no matter how good he runs between now and then. He's got to win a race. All of these guys have got to win a race if they want to make it into the playoffs. And again, I'm looking specifically at Todd Gilliland because he can win a race, and I think he will win a race before the playoffs. He's got the equipment to do it. He's got the talent to do it. And I think he's going to be the one that really spoils this playoff party right here because right now we've got a pretty locked down playoff grid unless somebody outside the playoffs wins a race. And I think he's going to be the one to spoil that party as we head down the stretch here and get closer to the playoffs. That'll be interesting to watch going forward. All right, so that's your playoff grid following the Eldora Dirt Derby, and that'll do it for us tonight on the Camping World Truck Series Rewind Show coming up this weekend. We've got a few shows lined up for you. We've got uh, Xfinity from New Hampshire and Arca from Berlin, both on Saturday. The Xfinity Rewind should be up. Uh, Saturday night, as that's an afternoon race from New Hampshire. The Berlin Arca race, though, is Saturday night, so that won't be up until at least Sunday. It may be Monday, like this past week's. Just depends um, how what works out with the, uh, the 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 point standings. Whenever they get updated, and when we get our our winner interview lined up, so it may be Monday for the Arca Rewind show, but. I'll try to get it out for you on Sunday, if at all possible. And then we've got a cup from New Hampshire on Sunday as well. So that will be be a cup rewind show going up Sunday night as well. F1 from Germany. So all of that plus F1 from Germany on pole position Monday night, 8 p.m. as always. So we got a lot of stuff coming up here in the next couple days as we get into this weekend. It'll be an exciting weekend here at Racing News Now, and I hope you'll stick around for all of that. If you haven't done it already, you need to go down below and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of that. And hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It's much appreciated when you do. So with that, this has been the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.